Hi, this is an in-depth review by Dana Specker Watts on the effect of instructional coaching on teacher efficacy and on student achievement. Um, this uh, program, this dissertation, was conducted by Shannon Panafilo Payton for Northwest Nazarene University. Teacher efficacy uh, can be defined as teachers' beliefs and their abilities to organize and execute courses of action necessary to bring about desired results. I am a huge believer in teacher leadership, and I truly do believe it's the best hope for changing our schools and really making the paradigm shifts that need to happen in society uh, in the future for our schools. And so... This dissertation really appealed to me and looking at how um, to really make teacher leadership more sustainable within schools and the way that we can really link it to student achievement. This slide and this uh, graphic may look familiar to many of you because it's from Scott McLeod and his blog, Dangerously Irrelevant. But I do believe that uh, we are wasting the time of teacher leaders um, and we're not utilizing the power within our own buildings and until we start to do that um, we're really spending countless amount of hours and, and, and dollars to send our leaders outside of our schools to get training and then they come back and that training is not transferred to the students or to our other faculty members and definitely not to other admin and our parent and I think all four of those stakeholders are essential to changing the schools of our future. Penfilo Payton wrote this dissertation as part of her uh, final completion of her dissertation of her doctorate work for Northwest Nazarene University. Um, Northwest Nazarene University was founded in 1913 in Napa, Idaho. And it is a nonprofit Christian liberal arts university. We'll take a quick little journey from um, my home in Maryland um, over to um, Idaho. Um, it would take 36 hours driving by car, and according to MapQuest. Um, so we're not going to do it that way. We're going to use the internet. Come along. Although Northwest Nazarene University is a small four-year institution, the university offers degrees, uh, the following degrees, a BA, a BS, an MA, an MBA, a Master's of Ed, Master's of Science, a Master's of Nursing, of Social Work, an EDS, EDD, and a PhD. As you can see, uh, Northwest Nazarene University is definitely a little bit smaller in the campus size um, than uh, the University of Kentucky, but it still has a lot to offer. There are also a multitude of campuses and locations available for people to uh, take courses. Um, they can look on the main campus, and there's one in Boise, Twin Falls, Idaho Falls, and online, which I believe is the program that this um, researcher did her research through. There are an abundant number of programs, uh, graduate programs available through the university, and um, the educational leadership a program is the one that this dissertation was written in fulfillment towards. The program is definitely a little bit different than our program at the University of Kentucky. Um, there's an online and a distance format, but um, the program length is only 22 months, which means I think some of us would have had two degrees at this point. <laughs> and um, then um, it also um, has a cohort model um, similar to us, but it has a two-week on-campus summer session um, to help prepare students for the dissertation and research. Panfilo Payton used um, uh, most of the people from her department um, within the Graduate School of Education. Um, all of these professors are either currently teaching there or did teach there in the past two years. To begin my approach to the process, um, I utilized an app, uh, one of my favorite apps on my iPad, um, called Notability. Um, it's this big blue um, 
square thing with a little pen and you'll notice there's a little microphone here at the end which means you can do audio recording as well and it allows me to annotate PDFs. For those of you who aren't familiar with it, um, you can create um, different notebooks. You can see them all over here. Um, here's my one for EDL 792 and then I've been able to import all the PDFs onto my iPad and then I can annotate them as well. Within Notability, I can also go in and I can handwrite things. Um, so I imported uh, Dr. Rouse's um, PDF form of the uh, dissertation review form. Then um, you can handwrite um, by using this icon right here, or I could type if I wanted to. I can highlight, which you can see evident right over here. I can erase things, chop them out, and or I can hold them and move them around. And over here you can do audio recordings. Um, basically, I used the handwriting exercise because I was happened to be on an airplane and I hand wrote all of my things. I could have typed on the airplane as well, but it was kind of fun to handwrite it. And I like to handwrite. Um, and I wrote down my original reflections here. From there, I use my trusty old Google Drive, which I love, um, to import in um, the PDF, and I made it into a Google Doc, and then I created a Google Doc for each one of the dissertations that I reviewed. You can see here there's one for all five, and then from there I took my messy handwriting and I typed it. Don't ask me why, um, but it helped me really kind of remember all the information, handwriting helps me a lot, and then I typed it, so it was twice as much work. I didn't need to do it that way, but I enjoy doing it that way, and it helps keep me organized. So here's an example of some of the typing that I put in for um, Panfilo Payton's uh, dissertation. Overall, there were a multitude of strengths to this dissertation that I thought were, I, I really thought that this one seemed phenomenal. Um, some of the other dissertations that I read I thought were horrible, and the writing style was terrible. It just drove me absolutely insane. So I basically chose this one because I thought it was by far the best, and I thought the layout and organization was amazing. So let's take a look at it and uh, follow along. The first research question um, looked at what kind of support can be provided to teachers so their self-efficacy is strengthened within an educational setting. One of the many things that Pan Panfino Payton did was she created these wonderful illustrations that went along with each research question. So this one looked at instructional coaching, teacher efficacy, and how that equaled and uh, equated into collective efficacy across the school. Um, and then she looked at um, the different research that she was going to do and how she put those, placed those things together. The second question was, are teacher efficacy beliefs affected when teachers receive ongoing professional development support from, this is the only mistake I saw throughout the entire dissertation, um, an instructional coach while implementing new learning. Um, again, um, Panfino, Panfilo Payton um, created another graphic, um, as you can see here, um, for her second area of research where she looked at teacher efficacy and when you add it and when you looked at student achievement, what kind of relationship did that into? And we have, again, her research is um, briefly listed below. The third question, research question, was can teachers increase their levels of self-efficacy within their instructional practices? What an amazing question. Um, but so anyway, instructional coaching um, was um, looked at in coordination with student achievement and um, then the relationship of coaching and student Again, the research, um, Hal and Cimarron was definitely utilized um, along with Davis, um, combined with Marzano, I believe I'm saying the name correctly, and then um, the relationship of instructional coaching. The theoretical framework uh, that Penfino Payton utilized um, 
really involved the instructional coaching work of Jim Knight and um, the work of Hal and Simmerall from 2008, and uh, research on teacher efficacy and the effect of efficacy on student achievement. Um, The study explored the key relationships between instructional coaching, teacher efficacy, and student achievement. You can see all three of those are illustrated here. Oops. You can see that they each are illustrated here, Um, but there was a small bit of confusion um, from this reader um, regarding the theoretical framework in that the design of the study clearly states that teacher efficacy and um, instructional coaching and student achievement would be explored, but it also mentions collective efficacy. I believe that she means for these little um, doohickey arrows um, to be how they're all correlated, but I'm not totally certain. Um, But that, so that part, and that becomes more apparent as you read the dissertation. They are all supposed to be uh, related, and that's where that kind of ties in. But I don't think it's 100% clear in this illustration. Two grade level groups of upper elementary school teachers with um, with a total of six participants uh, were interviewed and then digitally recorded and professionally trans- transcribed and coded for themes. These interviews varied from 20 to 38 minutes in length. And additionally, all members completed a teacher's sense of efficacy scale before and after the research study. And um, the, so this gives you an idea of the different participants within uh, the study and the number of years that they have been teaching, which is somewhat varied. Um, I have a feeling that the teachers who have been teaching 12 and 11 years would have a different perspective than possibly the ones who were three or two. I would also like to point out that all of the participants were female. Um, The researcher points out that they were all Caucasian women as well, which definitely could skew the results later on just because they have a similar background in, um, and um, ethnicity um, it could be, and gender, it could end up changing things. So that might be something to look at as a limit, limitation. This is kind of a nice uh, diagram of the data collection. Um, it started with the teacher interview. Then they did the teacher efficacy scale, which will, that's like the pre-test. The post-test is back over here. Then um, there was an uh, analytical um uh, viewpoint of our analysis, there we go, of the student data. Then an instructional coach worked with teacher teachers um, and teachers um, leaders. Then um, they looked at student data again um, for a pre and a post, and then a teacher efficacy scale, and then a reflection sheet at the end. Um, I thought this was fabulous, and I'm totally going to use this and steal this in my dissertation. Um, I love the fact that she would say, okay, the research question, question number one, I'm going to do a teacher interview, then there's qualitative data. I've actually created something almost exactly like this prior to seeing this, and hers is, I think, even nicer. Um, And then again, question number two, look at the reflection sheet. That's going to help her get that information, and it's going to be a qualitative analysis. Then um, for question number three, she used the efficacy scale. Then she used quantitative data to um, analyze the results. And then question number four, looking at student data again and using quantitative data and using um, SPSS um, to analyze that as well. I also really liked this graphic um, because it has teacher efficacy in the middle and all of these are kind of uh, related to one another. So support from school leadership, support from grade level teams, um, support found in PLCs, and support from instructional coaches. Um, These four main themes were the themes that came out um, through her research. This table was made um, to help illustrate the information and results from research question number three, can teachers increase the levels of self-efficacy within their instructional practices? This question included the implementation of the to Shannon slash Morin and Wolfolk Hoy teachers sense of efficacy scale to measure capabilities educators deemed important in their practice. Um, within this, um, additionally, the Wilcox, sign, uh, the Wilcox signed rank test was performed to look for differences between pre and post tests for signif- 
statistical significance. The post-test scores did not show a statistically significant difference in teacher efficacy for engagement under the intervent after the intervention occurred. For each one of the questions as well, um, when she looked at um, the different pieces, like this one looks at the individual participant results of the teacher's sense of self-efficacy, or a uh, sense of efficacy scale. Um, she went through all six of the participants and showed the pre- and post-test data. You'll notice in this one in particular, um, all of them show um, a better post-test score except for one. Um, this same participant happened to score differently and was kind of an outlier in almost all of their results, um, which I think is interesting. This person was also a person, she's been teaching the longest for 12 years, but this was her first year in um, teaching fourth grade, so there could be something else there. And in the limitations part of the dissertation, Panfilo Payton mentioned that there was one participant who truly did not seem to um, enjoy working with the instructional coach. That could potentially be this person, but it's hard to know. Here's a quick um, overview of the results of the Wilcoxon signed rank test in student engagement. Again, um, as I mentioned earlier, the one the one participant it shows different results than all of the other ones. Um, some are quite significant, um, and there might be more um, to learn about within that group. Um, I really would like to see this group of six become a much larger group and a more diverse group uh, um, in future studies. Here's another overview um, of the results of the Wilcoxon signed rank test regarding instructional strategies. Again, there's one outlier. The rest have shown um, definite improvement. Here's another illustration of the results of the Wilcoxon signed rank test in classroom management. And um, again, similar results. Improvement, quite a bit of improvement in the first person and the fifth person, and um, there's a downfall in the second participant. Again, I see the illustrations um, to be a full-on strength um, within this dissertation, and here um, we have our six participants. Uh, we get to look at their scores for the Mondo pretest and post-test, and then the difference in between the means, then the pretest and post-test, and standard deviation over here for um, the other test as well. So it's really nice to look at and to look at the Cohen C as well. Here's one more illustration of the results from the pretest and post-test student data organized by the teacher um, with the pre- and post-test averages uh, inserted over in the side. This is the reflection sheet that Panfilo Payton used um, from um, Knight um, that she received through um, one of Knight's workshops. Um, I think that it's a little more general than I personally would use in the future. Um, so maybe it's a strength and a limitation. Um, how do I feel about what I've learned during this session? What, do I mo what are the most important ideas I've heard? What's my eval evaluation of these ideas? And how can I use this new knowledge? And what will I do differently in the future? Um, there was perhaps at times a little bit too much emphasis on the work of John Knight. And maybe there are some other ways to reflect or um, reflection sheets that go a little bit more in depth than this one in particular. I enjoyed seeing this uh, quick little uh, survey here on teacher beliefs. There's a lot of really good questions in here, like how do you get through your most, how, um, how much can you do to get through to the most difficult students and um, things of that nature. How do you calm a student who is, how much can you calm a student who is disruptive or noisy, blah, 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 right? So you go in and you add your little, you fill in your dots and there's a pre and post test here. And this was a nice way to take a look at the belief system of the teachers within this study. This is an example of the three to five reading record from the Mondo reading assessment that was administered to participants before and after they underwent the instructional coaching. Um, I hadn't heard of this program before, and um, this was part of what um, the teachers uh, used with their students uh, as their pre and post test. 
although um, Panfilopedon does not mention the limited amount of participants, to me this is one of the limitations of the study. And um, the potential of the results to be generalized to speak for a larger demographic. Um, additionally, the teachers may not have perceived the instructional coach to have any impact upon their practice. I think that's true with the um, pseudonym uh, Trish participant, who seems to have always been the outlier in all of the results. Furthermore, um, there was limited knowledge of the instructional coach's abilities prior to the workshop and their effectiveness of working with teachers. There was a large reliance on the reflective practice of the educators and instructional coach, and if they don't understand how to reflect upon their own practices, this could cause a problem. Um, as I mentioned earlier, the participants were all Caucasian females, so all populations were not equally represented. And the geographic location may have also had an impact upon the study um, and the socioeconomic makeup of the school district uh, um, that was utilized could be an issue as well. Um, it definitely was, a, it seemed like a, a poor school district, and so the students' abilities uh, for pre and post tests may be limited or not limited, it's, and uh, it's hard to tell. Um, there's one more key point that I forgot to mention that I wanted to uh, discuss regarding the data analysis that I believe may have been beneficial but I thought was missing from uh, this dissertation, and that would be feedback from the students. Although the study is in keeping with a large portion of the research that's currently being conducted in schools, student feedback in the form of interviews would have provided additional data that may have spoken to the effect of the instructional coaching on student perception of effective instruction. Although I know this, that was not the focus of the study, um, one might be wary of putting too much emphasis on formative assessment as the only way to assess achievement in the classroom. That being said, the analysis of the study seemed very appropriate and thorough. It would be um, really beneficial, I think, to do a similar study as the study in the future um, with possibly um, juxtaposing a group of teachers who received the instructional support and a group of teachers who did not. Additionally, I think it would be really important to look at just the develop what makes someone an effective instructional coach. And if they're really effective with uh, in one subject area, does that necessarily translate that they're effective in other content areas? Additionally, maybe they work really well with one group of teachers, but then another group of teachers, and not so much. I know at my last school, there was a huge... Um, kind of underlying issue with coaches who were incredibly young because some of our older faculty did not feel as if they wanted to be coached from really young um, coaches within our school. And so overcoming that bias and working with that might be another area to look at. Additionally, um, really looking at um, school leaders and understanding um, their level of and need um, for teacher leadership and instructional coaching I think is really important and right now I think that school administrators really struggle in between the managerial aspects and administrative aspects of their positions and being true lead learning leaders within their school. Um, this quote in particular struck me. It said, together, the administrator and instructional coach construct sustainable relationships with staff members, provide a clear vision for teachers and their instruction, deliver professional development support that coincides with the school vision, and create positive school changes when necessary. To me, at the end of the day, that is what's so important, is everyone working together to improve learning within the schools. This study really um, opened up a lot of different windows of ways that this kind of research can continue to be done and um, kind of provided a nice blueprint for people who want to replicate it in the future. Personally, um, for my own reflection, um, this study it just spoke volumes to me because it really looked at, um, you know, I, I'm really interested in teacher leadership and how we develop teacher leadership. This is um, a 
framework that I had put together for a different class earlier, but I was looking at um, the impact on um, developing teams and then defining school leadership and the individual traits that create um, teacher leaders and uh, the small attributes that go with those different things and how those things are built. And so um, the two frameworks kind of go hand in hand. So this really concludes my in-depth review. Uh, Shannon Panafilo Payton, I hope I have not destroyed her names, uh, dissertation on the effect of instructional coaching on teaching efficacy and on student achievement. I think when we all, um, as we all sit here on the cusp of writing our dissertations, um, one important thing to remember, and I have this as my screensaver, is to be brave enough to start a conversation that matters. We need to start pushing the boundaries and uh, and not and really look at how we can really make implemental change and uh, within the schools and huge paradigm shifts. So good luck, everyone, and I can't wait to see what you decide to do for your research.